Okay, I am back with a new day and a new video and the same sweater as yesterday. And I decided to do a video about dreaming, lucid dreaming, outer body experiences and a little bit of sleep paralysis and trance, I think. Let's start with dreams. The fun fact about dreams is they happen when we are asleep. Very important. We lose awareness. We become unconscious. And it only happens when we wake up that we sort of remember what we were dreaming about. And often this is a collection of dreams that we dreamt during the day or a power nap or whatever. So it's sort of a bouquet of bits and pieces of our dreams come together and that's what we wake up with. But most of us don't remember a fucking thing. Which is fine. Um, another thing is very important. Is when we walk through a forest. Or we walk through a busy street. We humans are only able to become aware. Of let's say 15 or maybe 20% at the most. Of what's going on around us. So let's say we walk through a forest. We see the wild boar that is coming towards us. But we don't notice or don't become aware of the spider webs there or the little hedgehog there or the tree there. But we do see the bushes there. We are then looking at the boar and trying to find a safe spot to hide or something. But we ignore a tree trunk that's lying there and we forget about the mushrooms. They are there. But we don't become aware of them. So we know that they are there. But we sort of delete them out of our process. Um, same happens with walking through a busy street. Um, we tend to see the things that we are focused on. Let's say you want a new set of jeans or something. Or a long sleeve or something. We focus on... Which shop might offer us a certain amount of choices of, you know, the jeans that we want or the long sleeves or the hat or the scarf. Or then we focus on uh, the shops that we like and we automatically ignore. That doesn't mean that we don't see them, but we ignore or delete them out of our consciousness um, because we don't need them. It's not important, it's not necessary, it's not essential to go through life and get from one place to another. We know that they are there, but we be don't become aware of them. Now, what happens when you are asleep is that the 80% of these things, emotions, happenings, situations, signs, symbols, uh, crying children, uh, hedgehogs, and, and so on... Um, are sort of buried in our unconsciousness. And when we dream, they surface and they connect with the 15-20% that we do know about. So we have 80% of things that we don't know about. We know that they are there, but we are not aware of them. And the 20% that we do know is there or are there. These come together. It's everything that we went through during the day or in our lives and... Um, when we dream, our frustrations and sexual desires and all the input that is there, you know, old memories, bad ones, good ones, beautiful ones, ugly ones, uh, the things you hate about life, the things you hate about yourself, the things you love about yourself, the things that we admire in others, your hopes, your fears, everything comes together from a traffic light or a little mouse there to things that really freak us out, you know, like scary men wearing a hat or something. But um, that's what happens. We process these things in our dreams. That's why sleep is so essential and so important. We relive it, we process it, we give it a place, a time, a purpose or not. You know, um, we need sleep. In order to get the 100% organized and, you know. Um, in lucid dreaming, 
it's still the same thing. It's a creation of the mind. It's real and it's not real. But it's not real as in, you know, I knock on the table and the table is real. It's a creation of your own mind. So the difference between dreaming and lucid dreaming is that in dreaming you lose consciousness. You are not aware, but you do process all these things. In lucid dreaming, you are aware, but not conscious. You are aware of the fact that you are aware that you're dreaming. I hope this makes sense. So um, same thing. 80% we sort of push aside because we only need the 20% to get through life or through a forest or through a busy street. So we keep the 20% and we sort of, you know, um, push the other symbols and signs and happenings and situations and whatever. Screaming kid is a scro stroller, you know, a shop that's closed where others are open. You know, you don't need all that stuff. You need to... Get your jeans and your long sleeves so you are sort of, you know, shops that are closed, you know, you are going to ignore them, you are going to forget about them, but that doesn't mean they don't, they don't exist. They are still there. Now, uh, all trauma, we take everything, all trauma, good memories, we take everything with us in dreaming and lucid dreaming. Pay attention to the word dreaming. It's dreaming. You dream things. And we process things. And we relive things. And we um, have to go through an insane amount of information and input and data. And organize it. Now, what happens when people are in some way traumatized. Or, you know, they are paranoid. Or, you know, they think the whole world is against them. And... They are constantly under attack and um, they struggle and they don't want to be here and they hate life, you know. You take everything with you. So if you're lucid dreaming, it might happen that you get attacked over and over and over again because you lack self-worth, your auric field is shit, um, your energy system sucks, you know. You take everything with you. If you're in a good, healthy spiritual state then you will take that with you that's you know whatever is dominant sometimes it's sort of hopping balancing you know um but i see a lot of people that are tormented and feel haunted and are insecure and you will notice this um when you lucid dream and there you see a pattern happening so when you are sexually obsessed you will dream about sex and you know uh, people or entities or demons or whatever wanting you or, you know, have the same desires as you are. And before you know it, you think you are, you know, having sex, sex with an incubus or succubus or something or Lilith or whatever. I don't know. Um, if you go through life paranoid and scared and always tiptoeing around because you know you think that people are going to screw you over and attack you and are out to get you then you will become of the aware of this when you are lucid dreaming uh, all kinds of beings will attack you and torture you and haunt you and try to possess you you know against your will and ets and whatever um dreaming and lucid dreaming are creations of the mind they are a collection of Everything we went through in life, everything we experienced during the day, everything we love, fear, desire, you know, um, it's a mind creation. But it happens that when you are dreaming or when you are lucid dreaming, that this attracts the attention of entities or beings that are around us, but we are not aware of them. They are just data, information, pieces um, and they do step into your dream just to, you know, have fun, uh, maybe help you out here and there, but most of the time just haunt you, torture you, freak you out, scare you and uh, things like that. But still, the fact that it's a creation of the mind is important to know and dreams is about losing awareness and consciousness and dream state is... Uh, uh, lucid dreaming is still about not being conscious, but being aware uh, that you are aware in your dream. You have some influence on what's going on 
inside of you and around you. You think it's around you, but it's actually something that comes from within. It's a creation of the mind. Um, what I wanted to say is that these are um, things that are both liquid in nature. I don't know a better way to describe it. You sort of flow into it and you sort of flow out of it. When you dream, you lose yourself. And with lucid dreaming, you keep a part of yourself that is aware that, you know, whatever is going on. Anyway, whatever you remember in dreams and dream state and lucid dreaming should be in a uh, dream journal, I think. You keep a dream journal for about two years. And if the same things happen over and over and over again, then you know that you need to do shadow work. Um, and a lot of meditation and clearing and healing to get this right, to get this done, to get this done and over with. And then, you know, have more fun and joy while you are dreaming and asleep. Out of body experiences is, has nothing to do with falling asleep. Dream and dreaming and lucid dreaming is about falling asleep. You flow into it and you flow out of it. Uh, in one case, you forget. And in the other case, you remember. Out of body experience is nothing about falling asleep, flowing into it and flowing out of it. It's a deliberate, intentional act of leaving your physical body behind, lifting your light body or etheric body out of your physical body, and then choose a location, a direction, a purpose, a goal or whatever. And that's where you move towards. It has nothing to do with falling asleep and knowing that you are dreaming and being aware of the fact that you are aware while you are asleep. You either step out of your body, you float out of your physical body, you step out of your physical body without falling asleep. Um, and then you choose wherever you want or need to go to get more data, information, experience, wisdom, and so on, and so on, and so on. Of course, there is a danger when you do an outer body experience and you uh, go into the astral because, you know, there are a lot of beings out of there. It's the same with my living room. Some people see it, some people don't. Uh, but there are always, you know, there's a lot of activity going on here. I'm used to it. And in the beginning, when I just moved in here, I was like, I saw every entity that, you know, that was here. Um, but at some point, it's not important anymore. You come to a certain agreement. You, you know, make peace with each other. You, you know, um, and they are gone. That's not that they are gone, but they are still there. It's just not important anymore for me to become aware of it. They are not a threat. They are, you know, just there. Um, they protect my house. They protect my dog. They protect my garden. You know, it's fine. And in return, I leave them alone. <laughs> and that's it. So uh, when you go into the astral, after outer body experiences, experience, outer body acts, which is a deliberate, intentional act, you leave your physical body behind and you go out there to meet a certain goddess or a certain sphere or you just you know when i go into the forest i just you know let my dog take me wherever she wants to go and uh, it's the same with the astral i can just stroll around and take a look here and to collect there but when i go out i also go in it's not that i go out or people that whatever, you know, whatever people do outer body experience acts, um, they move out of their body and they return into their body on purpose, intentionally, deliberately. Um, so it has nothing to do with dreaming. It has nothing to do with lucid dreaming. You know that you are awake and conscious You know that you leave your physical body behind by rolling out of it, lifting yourself up or stepping out of it or whatever. Um, and it's not sleeping where you sort of, you know, sort of go down into sleep. You are aware or not and you wake up. Nothing like that. Um, then there is something like 
sleep paralysis, also a fun thing, which is, in my opinion, a unintentional out-of-body experience that fails. Because you are sort of, you know, it's like ping-ponging between your body and a surface and a ceiling. It's like... Dum -dum 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 -dum. Um, it's just failed. You know, it's not going to happen because you are not aware, you are not conscious. It sort of is a weird um, physical thing that happens and it just, you know, goes down the drain. You can throw it out of the window and, you know, the best way to avoid sleep paralysis is just, you know, fall asleep. When you fall asleep, when you have a thing going on, where your body, you know, is starting to get heavy and your light body is, you know, struggling and losing its connection and it's still connected, connected by a, some kind of elastic thread or something, fall asleep. You know, problem solved. You don't have to worry about it, but um, the light body is light. That's called why it's called a light body or an etheric body. Um, and your physical body is heavy. That's the only thing that we notice during sleep paralysis is that we suddenly become aware that our physical, physical body is dense and heavy. And you know, it's almost impossible for us to, or it is impossible for us to, you know, move even a finger or something or blink. Um, it's hard. Now, in trance, we are also awake and conscious, but our consciousness sort of decreases. What a lot of left-hand path practitioners think is that they, you know, if they start rocking and dancing and drumming and they uh, avoid sex for a while and they eat much less than they are nor normally do, you know, um, sleep deprivation, food deprivation, rocking, dancing, chanting, singing, you know, that it increases your conscious it doesn't. It decreases your consciousness. So um, you can't move because you're so relaxed that, you know, it's almost like sleep paralysis. And the only thing you do is like, you know, you're sort of uh, going through your own mind. It's almost like it's something between sleeping and dreaming and lucid dreaming and trance is, you know, trance is, you know, being so super relaxed, but not relaxed enough to call it sleep. And your awareness is between not aware and super aware, but it is a decrease in consciousness. So, um, again, if something happens to you while you are dream, it probably says something about you and the way you handle life, the way, the way you go through life. The way you either are able or incapable to process normal information. You know, if you... Uh, another thing is, if you are... I've talked about this before. If you are hungry for spiritual experiences, then your auric field becomes weak and distorted. And that's what you take with you when you dream and lucid dream or whatever. For, the, for some kind of reason, in dreams, the things that we don't want to face sort of surface. Um, but it is an unconscious act and a creation of the mind. And uh, where dreams and lucid dreaming have a fluid uh, sort of timeline, the outer body experience is aware and conscious and everything is solid and dense and real and um, you can also just out of body experience your arm and you know leave the rest alone and do a self healing on your, yourself using your light body arm that's something that i like to do a lot um, i can extend my arms and you know do whatever I want to do while my physical arms are just, you know, here or behind my head or whatever. So you can also partially outer body experience. But it is an act. It is a conscious, deliberate, intentional act. And that's what brings you into the astral. 
uh, if you want to. If you just want to go downstairs to check if you left on the lights or something, that's fine. Then you use an out of body experience for something like that. <laughs> that's what happened uh, when I was taking care of my children. Sometimes I was so tired that I decided to uh, let my body sleep, lift myself up, take a look at the children. Uh, see if they were asleep, if they turn out, turned off the lights, you know, if there wasn't any music on, if the TV was off, downstairs, things like that. And then I would go back into my body and close it. You start it, you close it. You start it and you end it deliberately, you know. Um, so it can happen that you meet, you know, entities or beings in, in your dream, but most of the time... These are wishes and desires or fears of the real thing. So not the real thing. To encounter the real thing, you have to do a little bit more than lucid dreaming. So I hope this makes sense. And I hope this solves a lot of the confusion or most of it. If not, um, I'm sorry. See you next time. Bye.